blue tube. Get it straight. Okay, this is a um, in-class example that we did looking at velocity and acceleration fields. Uh, we have the same math that we've been carrying out throughout the early part of chapter four, where we have these uh, simple expressions for u, the x component of velocity, and v, the y component. So this is a two-dimensional velocity field. It's a steady field. And we want to plot the streamlines, which indicate the velocity field, and the acceleration field. So let's look at the velocity field first. So remember, the key expression is that the velocity field streamlines will have a derivative dy dx that is equal to v over u. And so in this case, that simply cancels out most of the stuff, and we end up with the expression that the derivative of y over dy dx is equal to minus y over x. So we can separate that and integrate. Don't forget the constant of integration because that gives us our family of streamlines. So we have lin y is equal to the negative lin of x plus a constant. We go through some uh, logarithmic rules like so, and we end up with an expression that says x times y is equal to another constant. So these constants are arbitrary and they give us a family of curves. So you can see these curves here going along in all four quadrants. So notice also that there are arrows on these curves. So how do you get these arrows? That's important to know. Uh, so we have to go back to our original expression for velocity here and here, and then we can plug in any values from a quadrant and we'll see if u and v are positive or negative. So let's look at the first quadrant. So if in the first quadrant, both x and y are positive. So if x and y are positive, u is positive and v is negative. That means that the flows go to the right and down. Let's look at the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, x is negative, but y is still positive. So u becomes negative now and y or v, excuse me, stays negative. So now it's going to the left and down, like so. So you could carry that out for the other two quadrants as well. So let's look at the acceleration now. So for steady flow, or let's first say for acceleration, we have the local acceleration and the convective acceleration here in two dimensions. So we've got the u term and the v term. Now because it's steady flow, the derivative with respect to time becomes zero. The local acceleration goes away, but the, the uh, convective acceleration does not. So here it is. Let's work out what the convective acceleration is with our definition of the velocity field here from given in the problem. So we simply get that u times the derivative u is equal to these two terms, and we put them together. We get the constant squared times x. Now on the uh, other term, v du dy, in this case, not always, but in this case, the uh, um, expression for u is all in terms of x. So the derivative with respect to y is just like taking the derivative of a constant, and we get a zero. Similarly, we could do this for ay. Remember that this one is zero because it's steady flow. This one is zero because v is in terms of y only. So when we take the derivative, of derivative with respect to x, we get a zero. But v dv dy uh, gets the term below, which is similar to the one that we got for x, but has a y here instead of an x. So here's what the acceleration field looks like uh, mathematically. It's a little trickier to show it visually, but we want to know that the uh, ax and ay terms are given in terms of x and y here. And the magnitude of, of the acceleration is this uh, square root of the sum of the squares, which turns out to be this. Now remember the tangent of theta, these terms like velocity or acceleration is given by the ratio of ax over ay, or sorry, ay over x is equal to the tangent of theta here theta is the angle with the horizontal. So we can go around on any place on this curve. So if this was the velocity curve, for example, we could pick some dots on it here, here, here. Let's say we pick the point where y equals 3 and x equals 1. So here's 1 and 3. And we would say that the inverse tangent of 3 is about 72 degrees. 
would figure out the uh, magnitude of the velocity of the acceleration here, excuse me, and we'd be able to put that vector on the point 1, 3 at the angle theta with the horizontal here. That is appropriate. So it's a little slower than the velocities, obviously. You have to work your way around, but you end up getting a good picture of where the fluid is accelerating and decelerating as it moves along the streamlines. So try to get good at that. And that's it for this problem.